Hey everyone, so today I'm gonna to talk to you about five natural ways to treat anxiety and depression, so stay tuned. If you're new here, then my name is Dr. Elisha Goldstein. I'm a psychologist, I'm the founder of the Mindful Living Collective, and I help people go from a place of feeling stuck and overwhelmed to regaining a sense of personal control of their mind and their life so they can focus more on what matters in life and, and enjoy life more. If you want to engage in a personal coaching program with me, go ahead and click on the link in the description below. Okay, so these five natural ways to overcome anxiety and depression I have a whole lot of science behind them. I use them in my own personal life. I use them in my programs and they've positively influenced thousands of people. In order to understand why the first natural way of overcoming anxiety and depression is what it is, we have to understand that there's a conditioned reaction of hopelessness and pessimism or catastrophizing that happen with anxiety and depression. And you know if you've had depression, you get this feeling of, of like, am I ever going to break out of this? Um, is, is, can anything ever help me? Can I ever help myself? Um, is this is what my life is going to be like? And we get stuck in this conditioned loop. And so the very first thing we need to learn how to do is break the loop. We need to learn how to step into the space between stimulus and response where more choice, possibility, and growth lie. And the number one way we found to do that is by recognizing what's happening while it's happening. Another word for that is mindfulness or awareness. We're simply naming what's happening while it's happening. So studies show that when we're able to name or call out an emotional feeling that's there, we bring more blood flow from the lower regions of our brain into this prefrontal region, which is more involved with impulse control, emotion regulation, executive function. It also allows us to get more perspective of the choices and possibilities that are in front of us. The first thing we have to just recognize when it comes to these is to learn how to name what's happening while it's happening. That's the first step of gaining control over anxiety and depression. And then we can start layering in um, these other ways as well. Okay, so the second natural way to overcome anxiety and depression is with something called self-compassion. Self-compassion is the recognition that I'm struggling, so we're inherently naming it from the previous one, but with the inclination to want to help ourselves. We know when it comes to anxiety and depression, one of the things that our nervous system is really good at is attacking ourselves. So we start criticizing ourselves and it starts showing, it starts trying to point out what's wrong with us and what are the pitfalls or maybe even with uh, with uh, anxiety, like what are the worst case scenarios in front of us so we can plan and be prepared. We need to know all the things that are wrong with us, right? So uh, in order to fix the holes that are there. and But really actually what happens is we start falling into a shame spiral and, and, and continually thinking that something's wrong with us so much so that we start retreating and retreating and retreating more. And we maybe start feeling upset or irritable or angry um, when we're feeling depressed or even around or around anxiety. And so we have to recognize that, hey, this is this is tough. We start naming it, right? We're going to incorporate what we're learning earlier. Naming, naming what's happening. This is a tough moment. And you know what? Like this is a part of life. And um, tough things are a part of life. That's part of being human. I'm part of the human experience here right now. So now the question that I need to layer in, and this is so important because what we're doing is we're swapping out the self-critical mind, which is just amping up our nervous system or, or, or causing us more stress to kind of pile on that sense of pessimism and hopelessness that we know is a sign of depression and anxiety. And so um, with a different question, we're replacing it, which is what do I need right now? Think about the difference between the question, what's wrong with me? And what do I need? So we're swapping it out, but in order to swap it out, we step into that space between stimulus and response. We recognize what's happening. This is a tough moment. In life, there's tough moments. We're widening that space there. And then we're swapping out the question with what's wrong with me with what do I need right now? And then we can start telling ourselves, God, I just need to give myself a break or I need to go outside and get some sunshine on my face or I need to really need to call a friend. Let me tell you, if you're experiencing strong signs of anxiety and depression, absolutely seek help. If you haven't gone to a therapist or a counselor or someone you know that's within your community that or um, that's experienced something similar that can be a support, um, then go ahead and absolutely do that. So that's the second thing. Okay, so the third natural way to overcome depression and anxiety is by understanding and instilling a sense of purpose within yourself. Purpose in, in, implies a sense of connection with something greater than yourself. First of all, you have to know that you matter. 
And let me just tell you, the science is very clear about this. Our actions and behaviors have ripple effects across the people around us. So we are interconnected by different information and energy flow constantly between people around us, just like me and you right now. And so, um, so we wanna ask ourselves the question, like, what do I value in my life, just as a beginning? Do I value inner harmony? Do I value um, being more present and aware in my life? Do I value being giving with other people? Like when I, many years from now, looking back, you know, at, at end of life, looking back, like how will I wish I would have lived? And it's never too late. And so we're starting now. So I wanna, I wanna um, read a, a quote or a poem by one of my favorite poets, um, Rumi, because I think it's, it's valuable and worth repeating here. He says, sometimes you hear a voice through the door calling you. As a fish out of water, hears the waves. Come back, come back. This turning toward what you deeply love saves you. So we, we ask ourselves a question, like what matters to us? What matters to us in our lives? Like does, does is it, uh, you know, a sense of um, inner harmony, a sense of a healthy body? a sense of loving the people around me. Um, you know, what, what really matters for us? We know that uh, people who live with a sense of eudaimonic well-being, which is a well-being that's focused on more meaning, purpose, sense of connection, um, have uh, lower cellular inflammation that people that favor just hedonic well-being, which is just focused on pleasure, the simple pleasures of life, which is also important. Um, but but they might they they've been shown to ex have higher cellular inflammation, and so we want a mixture of both. But we do want to focus on this eudon eudaimonic well-being. So we ask ourselves, um, you know, what's important to us? So strong family, um, freedom, world peace. Um, you know, these are things when we say like, what do you value? People like think of these things, but it doesn't really translate until you ask yourself the question. Okay, so what does this actually look like? in my life, like what are the actual actions of it? So if you value inner harmony, you might value practicing meditation or yoga. And if that's practice, it's hard for you to do, you might say like, okay, well, who are the people around me? What's the community I'm surrounding myself with that's gonna support me in taking action with these actions? If you value a healthy body, you might value exercising on a regular basis or eating um, in a healthy way. Now, when, when we're feeling depressed and anxious, that's not always so easy. So then I ask the question, okay, so are there people in your life or can you find people? I know in our community, the Mindful Living Collective, that's where the people reside. Um, but, uh, but do you have these people in your life that you can make more frequent contact with that help inspire these types of actions which help you live alongside um, uh, the values that you wanna live? So again, pro-social action is also really helpful. What am I involved with that's something greater than myself? I will say this, just so you know, if you, if you value a healthy body, let's say, and you have friends or family and they see you exercising and working out, just know that that has ripple effects across their minds and lives. Gives them ideas like, hmm, if he or she did that, maybe I can do that too. So just know that's one way of doing that. So just taking this type of understanding of bringing more of a sense of awareness of your values and actions alongside your values is a natural antidepressant. Okay, the fourth way to naturally overcome anxiety and depression is to make sure you're integrating play into your life. Play is something that you find interesting, enjoyable, and, and satisfying in your life. And when it comes to depression in particular, that seems sometimes harder to come by. We typically lose a sense of interest and pleasure in things. So this is where we kind of need to act as if sometimes. And so, um, and so we have to think about, one of the things to think about if you're having trouble figuring out like how to play in your life, like how to bring more play in your life is, um, and here's an image of me playing at a recent Halloween um, <laughs> thing. But then I, I wonder like, hey, well, we, dress up doesn't need to be just for Halloween. Um, it could be really for anything. So just enjoy this picture of me and me becoming Bob Ross, embodying a sense of creativity and play. Um, but um, but really, like play really means just doing really anything you find interesting, enjoyable, or satisfying. And um, I'm going to give you a link below to um, a whole a list of a, a long variety of different ways to play to just spark that thought in your mind. Um, but the science shows that when we are able to um, create more novelty in our life. You can imagine novelty just makes sense, sparks our brain a bit more. So when we bring more novelty into our life um, by trying out different things 
that are there or we have playmates that we do it with, um, we, we tend to, uh, that tends to be really healthy for our brains. And so we, what we want to do that is it's a natural antidepressant in some way. Brian Sutton Smith, who is a longtime play researcher, said the opposite of play is not work, it's depression. And so, you know, consider that for a moment. Like, as a child, sometimes I ask people, like, well, how did you play? Were you out with people? Were you um, using your hands a lot? Were you creating things? Were you using your imagination? Were you by yourself reading? What were you doing? And that gives us ideas as to where I built, was I building things with Legos? That gives us ideas as to um, not that I want to go build Legos again, but I was using my hands and building things and creating things. What in my life can I do that with that now? Some people are already, you're already playing, but you're not naming it. Go ahead and name it. If you go out and bike rides and bike ride in new places, but you just think that's just what you do for exercise, label it as play and see what you notice. Um, if you're not playing a lot, think of, make a, start making a list of um, ways you used to play as a child and then say, or if it wasn't a child, the earliest time that you ever noticed play in your life, and then, um, and then say like, well, what were the qualities of that? If I was using my hands or my imagination, um, then maybe I can start bringing that type of thing into my life and in what ways. Um, play is a huge atmosphere we have in the Mindful Living Collective and also in all the programs I lead because it creates more flexibility of mind and allows for a more optimal learning and integration. And it's fun. And so um, go ahead and allow yourself an opportunity to, to explore and bring more play into the days, weeks, and months ahead in your life. Okay, the fifth natural way to overcome depression and anxiety is with something called a growth mindset. We wanna to learn to really adopt this. A growth mindset was um, a term that was created by Carol Dweck out of Stanford, and um, it's the idea that obstacles in life are inevitable. They're not things that just need to stop us and, and prove to us what we aren't able to do or what we can't do. Obstacles are inevitable, and we just learn to get better and better at them. So with this type of mindset, what, the science, what her science in particular has shown is that people um, might try things a little bit longer because they're really adopting a learning mindset. It's all about learning. Even obstacles are things to learn from uh, versus reinforcement of really what we can't do, which is what we typically focus on when we start getting depressed or anxious, what's not possible, what we can't do. Um, instead, it's just saying, you know, why? And we start kind of learning about this. Her research shows that students who adopted this mindset, um, tried harder on tests and did better. Um, her, st her studies have also shown that it's inversely correlated with kids in college who have been um, depressed, meaning they're more, they become more resilient when they adopt this mindset. They, they're depressed for uh, less time. And so, um, and so we wanna kind of ask ourselves a question, all right, so let me look at my day as an example. Um, what do I do during my day? What does my day look like from the morning to the evening? And what's nourishing and what's depleting and what's neutral? And then out of all these things that I've learned already in this video, the mindfulness of self-compassion, the play, um, and, uh, and being able to, and the purpose, what can I maybe swap out when it comes to the depleting or the neutral activities with things that might build these other natural ways to overcome anxiety and depression? For example, in the morning, when I wake up, instead of just like um, you know, slogging around the house um, or just kind of like uh, on autopilot, just getting my coffee or tea or whatever it is, I might just take a moment to check in my body, soften my body, take a deep breath and recognize that with this coffee or this tea, these leaves or beans were sourced from somewhere by multiple people um, who were now, now and with my own ability and my own funds, I purchased them and I brewed this myself, and now I'm gonna take a moment, take a couple sips with it. What's happening is our brain is recording the sense of connection that's out there. Try it out for yourself and just see what you notice. And, um, and then you're feeling, on the one sense, there's a sense of purpose almost in that, or a sense of something greater than yourself. Um, you're also starting to play with a little bit of mindfulness in that. Um, you might also realize that, you know what, I'm feeling kind of burnt out right now, and instead of just continuing to plug through, I'm gonna take five minutes and just rest. That's an opportunity to build self-compassion. Um, and so there's these different opportunities here to build these other natural ways of overcoming anxiety and depression if we look at our day and just swap out the depleting and neutral activities with these type of activities that build these other natural ways. So go ahead, and this is a way of you learning to get better and better at this. 
So, um, so build this growth mindset into your life. Now, the important thing to understand here or take home here is that depression and anxiety are things we can learn to get better and better at. We can create a, a much stronger sense of confidence that no matter what comes my way, I'm gonna be okay. And the number one way of, of really doing that is by wrapping ourselves in a community of people who are helping inspire, support, and encourage us, helping us give us ideas um, that they've sourced through their own personal experience, or making sure you're engaging with some kind of support mechanism of, of counseling or mentorship or therapy or something like that. Um, and if, so if you haven't checked out my Mindful Living Collective, uh, that's a place where we have a whole lot of people and we're practicing together, we're engaging all these different elements together in there through different practice sessions. We have a variety of teachers in there and a ton of content that's gonna be super supportive. Um, if you haven't checked out my Uncover the Power Within program, which is my personal coaching program, I absolutely urge you to do that. Um, and you can find a link in the description below. Um, where There's a whole structured program and we meet regularly um, within a group of people who are all dedicated and committed to making the shifts they want to make in their lives. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, go ahead and subscribe. I put videos out every single week. The intention is to give you morsels and nuggets and snacks almost, like almost mental snacks, to be able to support you in developing that sense of confidence over time. Um, and, um, and we hopefully have a whole playful and fun way to do it. So go ahead and make sure you do that. And I will look forward to seeing you in the next video.